Finally, for millions of our young people to leave school with debt of thirty, fifty, hundred thousand dollars and spend years paying off that debt. And that is why Secretary Clinton and I worked on a proposal which says that public colleges and universities in America will be tuition free for all families of $125,000 a year or less. And Hillary Clinton and I have worked on another proposal to say to those people who have left school deeply in debt, we are going to lower your debt burden. We're going to allow you to refinance your loans at the lowest interest rates you can find. Now, this is a revolutionary proposal for a number of reasons, not the least of which. There are kids in Minneapolis, all over your state, all over my state, kids whose parents, like my parents, never went to college, kids who when they're in the third or fourth grade understand that everything being equal, they are never going to make it into the middle class. They are never going to go to college because their families don't have a lot of money and their parents never went to college. I want every child in this country, every parent in this country, every teacher in this country, and Hillary Clinton wants the same, that those kids understand that if you do your schoolwork, you pay attention in class, that you will be able to get a college education regardless of the income of your family. So if you look at the economic issues out there, which is that we have a declining middle class, too many of our people are working longer hours for lower wages, we have 43 million people living in poverty, and we have a grotesque level of income and wealth inequality. If you look at which candidate Now, there's another issue out there which concerns not only our country, but concerns the entire world. And that is, as I'm sure all of you know, the scientific community is virtually unanimous in telling us that climate change is real. that climate change is caused by human activity, that climate change is already doing devastating harm to our country and countries all over the world. And what the scientists are telling us, and I am on both the Environmental Committee and the Energy Committee in the Senate, what they are telling us is that their previous estimates about the speed in which the globe is warming, our planet is warming, was wrong. They underestimated the severity of the problem. And what they are telling us is if we do not get our act together, we are going to see more drought, more flooding, more extreme weather disturbances, more rising sea levels, more acidification of the oceans. And by the way, what the CIA tells us is you're going to see more international conflict because people all over the world will be fighting over limited natural resources, water, land to grow their crops. That is the future that the scientists tell us we are looking at 
if we do not get our act together, which means transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. It seems to me, and I speak as a father of four and a grandfather of seven, that we have a moral responsibility to leave this planet in a way that's healthy and habitable for our kids and grandchildren. Hillary Clinton understands that. Hillary Clinton understands that we need to make major, major investments in energy efficiency and sustainable energy. And by the way, when we do that, we can create millions of decent paying jobs. <laughs> Donald Trump, on the other hand, thinks that climate change is a hoax originated in China. Now, I was surprised to hear him say that. I would have thought that he believed it was a hoax coming from Mexico <laughs> or a Muslim country. I'm not sure why he picked China. And by the way, China does not believe that climate change is a hoax. They are trying to transform uh, their energy system. But I want you all to think for a moment what it would mean to elect a president of the United States who rejects science. You cannot have sane, rational public policy if you reject science, which is precisely what Trump and a number of other Republicans are doing. So I say to anyone out there who is wavering as to whom they may want to support for president, think about your kids. Think about your grandchildren. Think about future generations and understand that we cannot elect a president of the United States who believes that climate change is a hoax. We need to elect a president who is going to be aggressive in transforming our energy system, and that candidate is Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump has talked a lot about trade, and I happen to think that trade is a very, very important issue. I happen to believe that many of our trade policies have been a disaster for American workers, and that's why I oppose NAFTA and CAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China. But I find it almost incomprehensible that you have a candidate like Trump who is talking about trade at the same time as he manufactures his products in Mexico, in China, in Bangladesh, where he is going to the lowest wage countries in the world rather than reinvesting here in the United States. So I say to Mr. Trump, if you are concerned about outsourcing, become a leader. Start building your factories here in the United States, not Mexico, China, or Bangladesh. There is another aspect of the Trump campaign that I find extremely disturbing. This country, as everybody in this room knows, has struggled from the inception of our nationhood, and before that, with racism, with discrimination, with all kinds of bigotry. I do not have to relate to anybody here what the people, the settlers who came from Europe did to Native Americans. I don't have to tell you because you already know the shameful way that Native Americans were treated by those who came here. 
I do not have to relate to anybody here the disgraceful way that Asian Americans were treated and the kind of discrimination they had to deal with. I certainly do not have to relate to anybody here the abomination of slavery, of Jim Crow, and all forms of discrimination that African Americans have had to live through. I do not have to tell anybody here that a hundred years ago, women in America did not have the right to vote. But because of the struggles of women, a constitutional amendment was finally passed which said that in America, women will not be second-class citizens. And I do not have to educate anybody here about the struggles that our gay brothers and sisters went through. So in many ways, in many ways, the history of America, you could look at it this way, is a fight against discrimination against racism, against sexism, against homophobia, against the tax on Native Americans, discrimination against the Irish, the Italians, the Jews. It's all out there. We do not want to go back to those forms of discrimination. Thank you. You know, honest people can have differences of opinion on many, many issues. That's called democracy. But we cannot be supporting a candidate for president whose cornerstone, the cornerstone of his campaign, is in fact bigotry and dividing us up. Whether it is our brothers and sisters who are Latino or of Mexican descent. Whether it is our brothers and sisters who are Muslim. Whether it is the African American community. And I want all of you to remember this because I think some have not. And that is well before Trump became a candidate for president. He was a leader of the so-called Bertha movement. And what that movement is about and was about was not a disagreement with Barack Obama. People can disagree with Barack Obama. It was trying to undermine the legitimacy of the first African-American president in our history. That's what that was about. Racist, pure and simple. There are too many serious problems facing this country. The need to deal with Wall Street and break up the large financial institutions. The need to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, our roads and our bridges and our water systems. The need to create a first class child care and pre-K system. The need to lead the world in combating climate change. The need to end a broken criminal justice system. This country must not have more people in jail than any other country on earth.
We are tired of seeing unarmed African Americans shot down by police officers. We need real immigration reform and a path toward citizenship. We need to overturn this disastrous Supreme Court decision on Citizens United. Those are the issues that together, black and white and Asian American and Native American, gay and straight, those are the issues that we have got to come together on. We cannot allow Trump to divide us up. Lesson that I learned from my